Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's Strategy of the Week presentation titled Bottom Fishing for Explosive Profits. My name is Jerry D'Ambrosio, Senior Instructor with VectorVest, and it's my pleasure to present tonight's strategy for you this evening. Bottom fishing is the essence of buying low and selling high. Rather substantial gains can be made by having the conviction and patience to survive a downturn. The key, though, is to wait for the market to stop falling and start rising again. Now, bottom fishing isn't for everyone. It is considered more of an aggressive approach because you are buying shares at the very early stages of a new uptrend. The market really hasn't sustained a trend yet, so therein lies the risk. You are taking on a little bit more risk by entering into the market that early, but with higher risk, sometimes comes greater reward. So let's jump into the software and get started. I'm going to move us from the home page into a market timing graph. And we are looking at the VectorVest composite here in candlesticks over the last one year. I'm going to pull this out just a little bit further. You can see over the last year or so, we've had some pretty severe downturns here. We had one back here in March, a sharper one here in May and in June. We had a few smaller corrections at the end of 2013, beginning of this year. And we had another sharp one here in December. So how do we know when it's a severe correction or just a natural pullback? Well, it's really hard to determine that just by looking at the price of the market. However, we have an indicator that gives us a tremendous advantage, and that's the MTI. I'm going to check the MTI, and you'll notice at the bottom, I drew a line here, a horizontal line, at the level of 0.65. And here at VectorVest, we feel that when the MTI gets to right around that level, 0 0.6, 0 0.65, that the market is extremely oversold and a rally is very likely to occur. Now, it doesn't mean that the market can't continue to fall once the MTI gets to that level. It can. So the key, again, is to wait for the market to stop falling and start rising again before we re-enter into the market. So to point out a few examples here, again, we had a correction here in March and in April of 2013. You can see that the MTI hit somewhat of a double bottom here. And on the 19th of April, the MTI was at 0.67. And that was at the actual bottom of the market. So the key for you now is to wait for a market timing signal to let you know that it's okay to start buying stocks again. And we know that the primary wave is our fastest, most aggressive signal. It's determined by the week-over-week -week movements of the market. Now, that could be a great early warning signal, letting you know that the trend has changed. But in this type of situation, you may want to wait for a more confirmed signal. And when we get a green light in the price column of the color guard, that's letting you know now that the market has risen week-over-week -week and day-over-day. So if I come down to the bottom here and put the green light buyer signals on, you can see that the green light or the first green light in the price column of the color guard, after the market reached that support zone of right around 0.65, that occurred on the 24th of April. So that would have been an excellent opportunity to pick up some good quality shares that have been beaten up with the overall market at discounted prices. And this right here, folks, is what Dr. Delito calls the blast-off phase. Now, again, that occurred, or your re-entry could have been on the 24th of April after this downturn. We had another even sharper downturn here in May and June of 2013. The first green light in the price column of the color guard after the MTI fell below that 0.65 level was on the 27th of June. And notice something here, folks. Notice the trajectory of the market price in that or during that blast-off phase as opposed to when the MTI crosses above one. You can see the rate of change here in the market price drastically slows down once the MTI crosses above that one level. So, you know, it's called the blast-off phase for a reason. Stocks are extremely oversold. The bears are getting weaker and weaker. They're getting more tired, and the bulls are ready to scoop up, again, good quality stocks at bargain prices. So another re-entry after this downturn was on the 27th of June. If we look forward here, it wasn't such a severe downturn here in October, but the MTI reached a level of 0 
first green light in the price column of the color guard occurred on the 11th of October. We had a sharper correction here in November and going into December of last year. MTI reached a level of 0.68 on the 12th of December. We got our first green light in the price column of the color guard on the 20th of December and we had a nice rally that followed. And again, another opportunity here in the beginning of February. So the MTI really does hold the key in helping you determine a severe correction or just a natural pullback. So these are some of the situations that I'm going to use in our case studies next. I'm going to move us from a market timing graph into the Unisearch tool. And I'm going to take the date up at the top to that first situation back on the 24th of April of 2013. I'm going to scroll us down to the bottom here and open up our searches bottom fishing folder. And I'm only going to highlight a few of the better performing searches. Any of these searches generally will produce some substantial gains during those blast off phases. But I'm going to look at a few of our favorites. Jailbreak slash AU. It's looking for stocks greater than a dollar, average volume greater than 250,000 shares. The key though to this search is the sort. Relative value divided by relative timing. It's looking for stocks that have good upside potential, but have been beaten down in price with the overall market. If I run that search, I'll close our directory here. You can see for the most part, these stocks have pretty good upside potential. Generally, they have RVs greater than one, but a lot of them are sell rated stocks with low RTs, meaning that they've been beaten down in price with the overall market. I'm going to come up here, click on quick test. Now that quick test, as we know, is going to bring us all the way to current. This is not an approach, folks, or a methodology that you would stay in any longer than I would say a few weeks. A few weeks off of the bottom and at the beginning of that blast off phase is when the market now establishes a trend. And we saw in the price of the vector vest composite, the rate of ascension with the vector vest composite price really starts to slow down a few weeks off of the bottom. So I'm going to change our end date here. Now I'm only going to go out two weeks from our entry on April 24th to the 8th of May. And I'll go ahead and run the test again. You can see the top 10 stocks, we have nine winners, one loser, average of just about 7% in a few weeks. Now you may say, well, 7% is great. It's not all that much. But take a look at the annualized rate of return. You really want to compare apples to apples when you're running a quick test over such a short period of time. Annual rate of return is 178%, and the overall market only went up 0.98%. If I close this quick test window and come down to the S&P slash ASX 200, double click on that. It's also looking for beaten down stocks in the S&P slash ASX 200 watch list. I'll go ahead and quick test those. We'll quick test that for a couple of weeks as well. Eight winners, two losers, up just over 3%. That's an 84% annualized rate of return. And then we have VST Mighty Mites, which looks for shares that trade above 100,000 shares on volume, that the shares traded that day needs to be greater than the average volume. The stock RS plus RV needs to be greater than two. Price greater than a dollar, RV greater than 1.20, and earnings growth rate to be greater than or equal to 14, but less than 45. And you can see the sort here, VST times GPE divided by RT. So we're looking for stocks with the best combination of value, safety, and timing, and growth to PE ratio that have been in the strongest downtrends. If I run that search, quick test the top 10, you could see 5.5%. Seven winners and three losers, that's 144% annualized out. So there's just one situation. Let me close this quick test window, go back into the market timing graph, and we'll take a look at another situation on the 27th of June of 2013. If I go to Unisearch, take the date here to the 27th of June, and I'll go back up to jailbreak slash AU, quick test those. Now that's going to bring us to current. We're only going to go a few weeks out. So I'll take the date here to July 11th, run the test. Wow, almost 8% return, 
10 winners, no losers, 203% annualized, and the market went up nicely, but just about 4%. So we almost doubled the performance of the market. I'll go to the S&P ASX 200. Quick test those. Wow, 14% in just two weeks. Eight winners, two losers. All of our winners are up double digits, and that's a 370% annualized rate of return, again, in just a few weeks. And then VST Mighty Mites, a nice close to 10% return with nine winners and one loser. And that's 248% annualized out. So what I did from here, and I'm not going to run through quick test after quick test for all of the situations that I demonstrated on the market timing graph, but I did create a table for you to see how these searches performed over the other situations that I showed you in that market timing graph. Again, just to review, we looked at this blast off phase here in October, this one here in December of last year, this one, which is a sharp one in February of this year, and also, I know that the MTI didn't get to that 0.65 level, but we did have a market correction. We had our first green light recently in the price column of the color guard on the 31st of March. So let me show you that table. Here was that first run from the 24th of April, two weeks out to the 8th of May. So in the Unisearch tool, I did show you the results of that run and also of the next one from the 27th of June to the 11th of July. Now that next blast off phase was from the 11th of October to the 25th of October. You can see jailbreak, 42% annualized, S&P slash ASX 295% annualized, and VST Mighty Mites 83%. And if you remember from that market timing graph, the MTI only got to about the 0.8 level or even 0.9, so it wasn't as sharp a correction as the earlier ones. And you can see the difference in the results. Obviously, the sharper the correction, the lower the MTI, the bigger the potential returns. Next run was from the 20th of December to the 3rd of January. The best performer was the S&P slash ASX 200, 168% annualized. The next run was from the 10th of February to the 24th of February. Jailbreak did exceptionally well, up 236% annualized. One more run, and that again was the recent run from the 31st of March up into the current day, which was the close of the 10th of April. The best performer was the S&P slash ASX 200 up 183% annualized. And what I did is I averaged all of these out, and the best performer on average was the S&P slash ASX 200 up 177% average annualized rate of return. And these are just some of the better performing bottom fishing searches that we have. The key to everything that I did here tonight lies in the MTI. So the next time that you see the MTI approaching that 0 0.7, 0 0.6 level, you know that eventually when the market stops falling and starts rising again, it will present a tremendous buying opportunity and you'll be able to pick up some good quality shares at bargain prices. Well, I hope you learned a little something here today and enjoyed the presentation. Have a great weekend, everyone.